regular notice requirement of the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act has been complied with and that adequate advance notice of this meeting was given at least 48 hours in advance. On December 12, 2017, notice was mailed to the Courier Post and the Aldea and the Philly Inquirer. Notice was also posted on the bulletin board located by the reception desk at the central office in all school building bulletin boards within the district. As I call your name, please answer present. Ms. Teresa Atwood, Ms. Catherine Blackshear, Mr. Jose Brito Bueno, Ms. Dorothy Burley, Ms. Taisha Manier, Mr. Wasim Mohammed. Present. Mrs. Felicia Reyes Morton, Mrs. Martha Wilson. We have a quorum. The board will now go into closed session to discuss the matters of the following nature. Confidential by law, receipt of government funds, individual privacy, collective bargaining, purchase of real property, safeguarding of public property, investigations, litigation, contract negotiation, attorney-client privilege, personnel, civil penalty deliberations, remands, and expulsion hearings. At this time, do I have a motion to go into closed session? A motion was made by Ms. Blackshear, I'm sorry, Ms. Blackshear to go into uh, closed session and it was seconded by Ms. Burley. We will now go into closed session for 30 minutes. Returning at 6.38. At this time, I call for a motion to come out of closed session. Well, a motion was made to come out of um, closed session by Ms. Atwood and second by Ms. Blackshear. I will now take roll call. Teresa Atwood? Yeah. Catherine Blackshear? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Jose Brito Bueno? Ms. Dorothy uh, Burley, Ms. Taisha Manier, Mr. M um, Wasim Mohammed, yes, Mrs. Felicia Reyes Morton, yes. and Ms. Martha Wilson. Yes. We are now out of closed session. All right, we're going to come down to the first couple of rows for the superintendent's presentation. So I want to begin. I want to begin this evening by. Acknowledging the passing of Ms. Roulette Twan Cream. We lost a legend in this city. And I want to do a brief moment of silence, and then afterwards I'm going to invite up our board president to say a few words. So if we could just uh, give a brief moment of silence for the passing of Ms. Cream. I think many of you all know far better than I do that she inspired a generation of youth and educators and parents and community members. And so I want to welcome up uh, Ms. Wilson to just share a few words about Ms. Cream. If I stood here for the next six hours, we could not say enough for Ms. Cream. So today we're just going to give you a few snippets and we'll have more formal information coming to you later in the week. The Honorable Valetta Cream. Ms. Cream was a strong and phenomenal woman. She shared and gave of herself to her beloved city of Camden, teaching in the Camden City School District, serving the Board of Education and the Camden County Board of Freeholders. We've named a library, after her 
and a school of our beloved queen. No one loved the children of Camden more than she. Ms. Cream started a scholarship fund on behalf of the children in Camden. At her 91st birthday, she asked for monetary gifts, and all of those gifts went directly to the scholarship on behalf of the children. She supported Camden High School Panthers, whether it be the basketball team, the football team, track. She was a true purple and gold panther. So that the children could go to college, she set up the scholarship fund. We miss her because she would hold your hand and walk with you and talk to you and give you nourishing comments about the things that was going on around us. She knew that we were going to have to take on, but she had that sweet, gentle spirit to tell you how to go about doing it, decent and in order. She has now transitioned to her heavenly home where she is at peace. We will miss her. We will miss her talking to us and giving us knowledge. Miss Crane, you will really and truly be missed. Rest in peace, our strong, beautiful queen. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done. You now can receive your royal crown, and I'm sure the stones in that crown will be purple and gold. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. It was beautiful. Okay. We're going to now begin by swearing in uh, the remainder of our student board representatives. And Letitia Sims, I believe, is going to come join us up front as we swear in the four uh, who are here seated on the front row. Just two. Three. One of you has already been. Got it. That's right. Good evening. Let's give a round of applause to our student reps. I. I. Affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and, that I will bear true faith and, allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same and, to the governments and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States under, the under the authority of the people. So help me God. I do affirm. That I possess the qualifications for the office of student member, and that I am not a disqualified as a voter, nor disqualified due to conviction of a crime or offense listed in NJS 18A 12.1. And that, I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially and, justly, and justly perform all the duties of that office, of that office according, to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. All right, we have four updates for you all for this month's presentation. I want to jump in by giving a gifted and talented update. So our team uh, has created a working group. We've been um, 
also collaborating with a good number of community members as well. And there are three trending recommendations I want to share out. The first is that we intend to move forward with a pilot at two family schools beginning uh, next school year. So we haven't chosen the two schools, but we do expect them to be geographically diverse uh, parts of the city. Uh, so not two schools, obviously, right next to each other. Uh, so we're going to move forward with that training recommendation. The second is that we're going to focus the program on grades three through five. And then the third is the screening process will begin this spring. So this upcoming spring, we will begin the screening process uh, to then enroll students into those two programs beginning next school year. We have a whole host of open questions that we've got to work through, uh, and we're looking forward to continuing with the Gifted and Talented Working Group, um, continue to move forward with the Gifted and Talented Working Group to reconvene in January to think through those additional considerations. So for example, do we want the referral process to be driven by families, uh, by parents, by teachers, by both. Uh, those are the open questions. Those are examples of the open questions uh, we want to uh, continue to explore. Another example would be what screening tool we're using. Olstat is one very prominent assessment that's used nationwide. There are a couple of, a couple of other options that are also at our disposal. What cut scores will we set for our program? Uh, so again, a lot of other questions to work through, but we are now pressing forward um, with the screening process kind of most immediately coming up this spring. Aramark, uh, I just wanted to let you all know that since the last board meeting, our staff has met with Aramark a couple times over to better understand the factors that drive menu development, given some of the questions and concerns that came up. Uh, and so, you know, long story short, what we're going to be doing is uh, continuing to press forward with the ongoing feedback loops we have, but also creating some new feedback loops. So the current feedback gathering structure, um, we meet fairly regularly, so monthly. Uh, we have focus groups with high school students across all of our five high schools. And we do regular check-ins as far as our staff meeting with Aramark. And then, of course, as you all know, they're seated uh, in that back left corner at all of our monthly board meetings. Uh, but moving, moving forward, uh, we're also going to be doing a, a few things. So one, on January the 4th, there's going to be a parent roundtable. And at that parent roundtable, uh, we are going to collect feedback. So um, that will be another opportunity for our parents to share feedback. Secondly, we're launching informal parent focus groups. Uh, thirdly, we're launching a community wellness committee. Uh, so if uh, any of you may have your hand up uh, at this very moment in the audience, potentially you could join the community wellness committee and save your questions for that first, uh, for that first meeting. And then lastly, we're doing additional food service content, um, including menus and pictures and, 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 and putting all that onto our website. Uh, and so that'll be, uh, be able to give uh, folks more information. I'm going to move on. These are all updates. These are pictures of our actual food in our actual school. All right. I've got some important Camden High updates for you, Ms. Fida. So we, I should say, the Camden High School committees uh, recently met, this was actually last week, members of the Culture and History Committee visited their warehouse where all the memorabilia is being stored. So these are some pictures of the memorabilia at the, web, at, at the warehouse. And, and so those individuals are now making recommendations in terms of how we're going to preserve these memorabilia in uh, the newly constructed Camden High School. So I just wanted to share that out with you all. Secondly, and, 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 and very importantly, we now have three exterior design concepts for the new Camden High. Some of you all may have seen this already. I, I would imagine most of you are probably seeing this for the first time. Um, so these are three two-dimensional drawings of what the new Camden High can look like. Concept one, as you can see, is a little bit more classical in nature. Um, concept three at the bottom is a bit more modern uh, with a white exterior with more, wind, uh, with more glass built into it. And then concept two is basically in between, kind of a hybrid classical and modern. To give you a better feel for it, and I know these pictures are a little bit hard to see on the PowerPoint presentation, but you can get better glimpses online, on our website, on social media, Facebook and, uh, and Twitter. These are three-dimensional uh, drawings as well. So concept three is there at the bottom, concept one uh, top left and two top right. So far we've gotten a couple hundred respondents uh, in terms of the survey link that we sent out and would encourage anyone here that's interested to, uh, to vote. 
Uh, we are looking to finalize the recommendation to the SDA uh, by the next board meeting, and we'll share that out for you all. Uh, last I heard, uh, I'm hearing that Concept 1 has a pretty sizable lead uh, for what it's worth, and I think potentially because um, it, it very kind of directly honors the legacy of the old building. All three, certainly, uh, you, you can see the tower honors the legacy of the old building, but Concept 1 is, is more classical in nature, much like the uh, existing structure. All right, last update, and then we'll share out the district highlights and move into public commentary. We'll, we'll, have, um, we'll go through the, the, uh, the board items on stage and then go into public commentary. So I think most people probably saw there was an, uh, a news, uh, newspaper uh, article in the Philadelphia Inquirer um, announcing kind of formally the building sale. We've been giving you these updates at all of our board meetings. Uh, so uh, we are basically uh, near closing in terms of... Um, the, the final steps of the financial transaction. To make a long story short, we are selling the building, which has really been a goal of ours for 18 months, maybe longer. Uh, and we're selling the building for what I believe to be a very, very fair price at $5.2 million. Uh, some of you may remember the district bought the building back in 2006 for $2 million. So you know, roughly 10, 11 years later, we're uh, more than doubling the value of it. Uh, the main reason we're moving out is because the building, one, is, is too big for our needs, but really more importantly, it is very expensive to maintain. Uh, and so the building being old, um, on average, we have spent roughly $400,000 a year in maintenance and repairs, wh whether it's a burst pipe, an HVAC problem. Uh, and so we're going to be saving considerably by moving into uh, one of our existing school buildings, and that is the Washington School. Uh, so the Washington School is a school building that is in good shape. It was uh, utilized as a school building as early as last year, uh, and we believe the cost savings are very, very, very significant. Uh, one year, just to kind of give you a snapshot of what uh, played out in terms of our costs, one year we spent almost $900,000, almost a million dollars in repairs when we had a flood on um, the 6th, 7th, and 8th floors. Uh, so we are going to be saving considerably in a building uh, that is more aligned to our size, our needs, and also takes a vacant building uh, off the blocks in Camden, which I think is also important in terms of neighborhood revitalization in the Kramer Hill area. We are going to now move forward to the district highlights. Uh, so uh, you, can, you can share it during your three minutes. You know, no, I'm sure it'll be great. But what I want to say to you, you said that this building is going to meet the needs of the, of the Ucons. What about the needs of the citizens? There is no bus that will take a path to Washington School. You have to take two buses. So what about the needs of the parents? Aren't the reason why everybody is here is for the education of our children and the parents? So I'm going to respond to that really quickly, and then I'm going to move on to the district highlights. And you got free space to set up. Yeah, so I'll tell you right now, there is not one great location that meets everybody's needs. There is a bus stop on River Road. I would agree with you, depending on what part of the city you're coming from, you, you, you may have to take a second bus. I understand that. And so, So the options in and around the Walter Rand Transportation Center were basically either non-existent or they were exorbitantly expensive. Uh, real, estate costs, real estate costs have come up very, 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 very significantly on the waterfront. Uh, and at City Hall's, the spaces that are available in City Hall are truly in disrepair. We actually looked at it. It would require a couple million dollar investment to, to bring them uh, into kind of uh, working condition. It's not going to require that much. I'm going to move on to the district highlights. These are some pictures from the Turkey game. I think a lot of you all probably attended. Uh, congratulations to Camden High School, who won. And also huge congratulations to Woodrow Wilson, who went on to the state championship game after the Turkey game and lost in a heartbreaker. For those of you who were at that game, I think the refs had a pretty solid hand in the outcome, unfortunately. It was some really bad calls there toward the end. Probably don't need my editorializing there, but it was a wonderful season uh, for both teams. These are pictures from a dedication we had uh, for our uh, middle school boys and girls basketball league, which we've uh, reinvigorated uh, through a partnership with the Philadelphia 76ers, who uh, are a key sponsor. They're providing jerseys and providing other supports and resources for our kids. 
uh, and also the Camden Health and Athletic Association with Mr. Al Dyer. Uh, we had roughly 350 students at Creative Arts Morgan Village Gym. Uh, we honored Dewan Wagner, uh, who we are naming the, the league after. Uh, we had some, um, uh, some 76ers alumni there. We had the head of their youth foundation also speak. And World Be Free was also kind of the keynote speaker there. This is a really wonderful event. Uh, it ended in a basketball clinic for our kids. So speaking of the 76ers, we partner with them for, um, uh, for PIBIS, uh, Positive Behavioral Intervention Supports. And uh, this is one of our students, Darnell Baynard, uh, who is uh, at HB Wilson. And as you all know, PIBIS is about uh, incentives for positive behavior. And this was kind of one of the bigger incentives, one of the biggest prizes you can win, which is getting to attend a 76ers game and being treated basically as a, as a celebrity there. He got a jersey with his name on it. He got to hang out with the mascot. Uh, the principal of H.P. Wilson is there as well. So just wanted to share that out. We recently had Computer Science Week in the Camden City School District, um, the Hour of Code. Uh, so these are some pictures across some of our family schools. Uh, and during this week, school leaders and teachers participated and explored coding activities to expose students to critical thinking, problem solving, and logic and reasoning skills. Big shout out. Can we give Xavier Diaz a round of applause? He won first place in a national essay competition from the Military Order of World Wars. And uh, so Xavier had to write an essay on examples through history when leaders change their minds and positions on major issues and explain their justification for the change. And the first place, Camden High student, and the first place award, uh, he received a $2,000 scholarship. And he told me earlier, that's not, that's not gonna be the last one he wins. Congratulations, Xavier. And we're gonna close, we, we only have one, uh, one retirement, and we'll acknowledge that individual on stage. Thank you all very much, congrats again, Xavier. Uh, we would like to, the board would like to thank and acknowledge Ms. Arasali Chevere, uh, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, for her 27 years of service, um, most recently at the Veterans School. So thank you to Ms. Chevere for uh, her commitment to Camden families. We're going to now transition into public comments. The Camden City School District welcomes the attendance and comments from all members of the public at its meetings. This public comment period is your time to be heard on the agenda items in the meeting. My apologies. We're gonna do the student reps first. Hello everyone. I am Siani Davis, a senior attending Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy, and today I would like to highlight our school for implementing Saturday school, where our students can come in on Saturdays and get work done, and anything for me, I do my college work on Saturdays, so I go to school and do that. Also, I would like to um, thank school-based youth service for meeting with each grade level once a week, and that has been, um, that has shown improvement in our school drastically. and. Also, I would like to see that we get more career exposure, and we are pushed to go to college, but we aren't sure what um, those options are once we get to college, so I would like to see us get more um, career exposure. Hello, I'm Ms. Tavares. I am the junior at Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy, and I am the, uh, I'm also a board rep for Creative Arts. Uh, I would like to talk about the transportation uh, for high schoolers. Um, the Walter Rand Transportation Center no longer has the 460 for for student, for high schoolers to get onto at the school, and that is a major inconvenience for us students. The buses are inconsistent; they are cramped, and they are dangerous. For they are dangerous. As the day as the year goes by, the days are starting to get shorter because we're in uh, winter, and there's going to be worse worse um. This, excuse me, there is going to be, the weather's gonna get worse and it's going to cause traffic. And once the traffic starts, the buses are gonna start running late. When the buses run late, there's, students are gonna be getting dropped off at, at night at sometimes, which is dangerous because some students, such as myself, 
have to walk a distance after getting dropped off. It's cramped. I've had days where I've had to wait for one for the bus to go by just because there's too many students to get on that one bus, so we have to wait for another one. And even then, there's some students who are unfortunate and there's not enough space for them to get off, so they have to wait for a third bus. And finally, um, since it's a public bus there, we are surrounded by other citizens of Camden. And there's been two incidents where students have gotten into an altercation with the students. And they have both almost resulted in fistfights. That is all. And uh, here's the next representative. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Kaya Coleman. I'm a junior at Camden Big Picture Learning Academy. Um, something that is going well at our school is we have no teacher vacancies anymore. Um, our schedule has also been changed to, to meet the needs of the teachers who walk back and forth from our high school to our middle school. And finally, um, we are working closely with the superintendent and his staff to fix the other concerns of our school, but our school is <laughs> becoming a great school again. Hello everyone, my name is Xavier Diaz and I attend Camden High School. This year I'm a senior. Um, one thing I want to point on again is um, our great college access uh, advisor, Mr. Miller. He's great. Um, just the other day, he uh, was generous enough to go out of his own pocket to pay for me uh, my SAT scores to be sent to colleges that I get in, didn't get to send them to for free. So I appreciate him for that. Quick shout out. Um, I also want to shout out our principal and our school-based youth services here at Camden, there at Camden High School. Um, after the first marking period, uh, there was an assembly where we were able to, or well, they were able to um, showcase the people who attained merit roll, honor roll, and honor roll, and who also had perfect attendance or uh, great attendance, which is like one lateness. But it, it, it gave students the encouragement to do better or if you're not performing at that level and for the, for the students who are to continue striving for greatness because it, it makes everyone feel good when they're uh, recognized for something. Um, another thing is uh, our growth areas is, I, I think I stated it last month, is um, just security support so like that we could have um, just more eyes and more hands work work well in our building because we were small like we had like four officers and we occasionally have like one officer from BPLA come over but that's like inconsistent so for us to have um, just just for the safety reasons um, because there was an incident where there was a fight going on and there wasn't enough there wasn't enough officers so there wasn't an officer on that floor so the officer had to come down from another floor to do it so the fight went on drastically longer than it needed to um, so Security support is a real big issue, and uh, we hope that you find it in the budget to provide us some more security guards. And that's it from the board reps. We're now going to go into the public comment section. I'm going to read the rules for public comment. The Camden City School District welcomes the attendance and comments from all members of the public at its meeting. This public comment period is your time to be heard on the, agenda in this, on the agenda items in this meeting. Each person who signed up to comment will have three minutes. You will be notified when your three minutes are up. You cannot yield your time to another person. When it's your time to speak, please refrain, remain at the podium and address all of your comments to the board president or the superintendent. Please conduct yourself in a respectful and courteous manner. For anyone whose comments or actions either harass, intimidate, or threaten the safety of any person, we will provide you with a warning or immediately end your comment time. Also, if you curse, use vulgar language, or make personal attacks, we will provide you with a warning or end your comment time. We will not interrupt you during your three minutes of comments. Members of the audience should also not interrupt the speaker at, that podi at the podium. If you have any questions, please ask your questions during your three-minute comment period. After the public comment period is closed, the superintendent or his designee will address your questions to the extent provided by law.
The first person, Naima Gillespie. Good afternoon. My name is Naima Gillespie, owner and director of Dare to Dance, and also a board member for Can Do, which is Camden African Neighborhood Development Organization. First, I'd like to thank the board and the superintendent for all of their support to date. I would like to personally thank Mr. Rahanifer for always supporting and attending our many community events down to uh, Fairview Neighbors 5K. You've been there, and we appreciate it. For those who may not know, Dare to Dance is a program servicing ages 3 to 18, teaching various techniques such as ballet, tap, jazz, and hip hop. We also uh, um, offer adult classes and fitness classes as well. We take pride in raising great dancers and even greater human beings. We currently have 147 students who are excited to both dance and give back to their community. Our program is making a positive impact in the lives of Camden families and the community as a whole, but we need your help. We are currently without a permanent location, which is hurting our ability to expand and take our students to the next level. With the permanent space, we will be able to bring our vision of DARE Academy to fruition. The Academy will be a collaboration of I Dare to Care, which is an awesome mentoring program led by Ms. Pamela Grace in Baltimore, DARE to Dance, and our newest addition to the family, Dare to Flip, which will be the first gymnastics academy in the city of Camden. Nice. We will also be able to host other programs and organizations who may need space to reach the community. We're asking for your help in identifying a vacant facility that you might think might need, meet our needs and giving us a chance to build that long-term home. Please let us know if this is something you'd be able to support and we would thank you for considering us. Thank you. Mackenzie Taylor. My name is Mackenzie, and I'm a sparkle. And what else? And I love my dance call. <laughs> you can't, they can't hear you. You love your what? I love my dance call. Good job. <laughs> Tiana Brown. Good evening. Um, my name is Tiana Brown, and I am a D2D parent. I'm here to um, also express my concerns for the expansion. Um, my daughter, Ayana, um, has been become a part of the program since its beginning. Um, I've been knowing Miss Naima for um, some years now. She and my sister danced a long time ago. And I remember Miss Naima coming back from um, college, coming back to the city, and really expressing some concerns and hopes and aspirations to set up a dance program for young girls in the city of Camden. Um, needless to say, a year after, um, her dreams became a reality, and I was very ecstatic to have my daughter become a part of the program. Um, Naima and her staff really are true to what they say and to what their mission is about. Uh, the dance studio provides way more than just dance technique. They really are raising greater young ladies. Um, it's a place for my daughter to feel like she can express herself freely um, without ridicule, um, but constructive criticism. A place for her to understand how to control herself emotionally um, and socially and um, being able to facilitate themselves in a bigger facility is just something that is needed. Um, we're now in year four and things are getting bigger, which is a great thing, but the space that we're currently at just doesn't hold all the aspirations that the organization wants to take place. So I really do hope that you guys um, consider uh, what Ms. Naeem is asking um, and become a part of greatness for D2D. Thank you. Pamela Grayson. Good evening. My name is Pamela Grayson Baltimore, and I am proud to say that I am 
born and raised in Camden, New Jersey, um, public school educated. I am proudly the founder and CEO of a mentoring program for females called I Dare to Care. I Dare to Care was established in 2008 because I recognized the impact of mentors on my life and wanted to do the same for Camden. I recognized that without those special teachers like uh, Ms. Snow at Washington Elementary School who saw something in me at second in second grade that allowed me to excel um, not only through uh, my um, elementary, middle school, and high school, but also allowed me to excel at Rutgers University, um, obtaining my BSW, and also going back and obtaining my MSW. I started off I Dare to Care in 2000 in my home. To date, we have service, I'm sorry, in April 2018, we will be going on 10 years of our anniversary. Um, we have service to date close to 500 individuals and families, not only here in Camden, but Philadelphia as well. Our mission is to help others recognize the power of their voice and the value of their lives through mentoring. Um, I am excited to have been a part of collaboration with Dare to Dance as well as Can Do. We have been um, active in the Trunk or Treat as well as the Back to School Jam. I recognize that together we can do more. Um, it's possible for us to do more with your assistance and I'm hoping that you will allow us uh, to change the world right here from Camden, New Jersey. Thank you. Shanice Fields. Good evening. My name is Shanice Fields. I was a part of I Dare to Care for about um, five years. I started off when I was in ninth grade in high school and I am also from Camden, New Jersey. Um, the, the mentoring program has helped me tremendously. When I first started the program, I actually was um, very depressed. Um, I, was, I was a kid that was, I didn't really know who I was. Um, I wasn't, I didn't have um, the worst parents, but I also didn't have the greatest parents in my eyes. Um, so I was hurt a lot as a kid because I didn't understand really um, what was what was going on in my life. So when I started, I was in ninth grade and I was basically flunking out of high school. I had about, in 12th grade, I had about a, a 1.5 GPA. Um, then I went, I moved on within a program and I went to college and, and in college I maintained a 3.5 GPA. <laughs> And I made the dean's list every semester. Um, so basically, it just took me from a moment of depression and suicidal to a moment of a young lady of knowing, knowing who I am and realizing that my life, you know, I have control of my life and that basically you can really, you know, transform yourself with your mindset. And that's what Ms. Pan taught me. So my whole life is about giving back and um, teaching people that you don't have to be your circumstances or what your parents are or your background or where you're from, but you can take back your life and you can become the best thing that you can be. And that's why I'm so grateful. I'm about, I'm about to cry, sorry. <laughs> I get emotional every time I think about it. But this program needs to be in Camden for as long as it can, it can be because you'll transform so many little kids' lives and they'll know who they are through this program. So thank you. <laughs> Eliana Melendez. Hi, my name is Ileana Melendez, and I am a mentor, and my daughter is a mentee for I Dare to Care. I've been a part of the program since 2013. It has helped me guide, at that time, um, a sophomore 
in high school. She graduated from Camden City's Public School. She's now finishing her BA in journalism and she, can, she wants to continue on to have her master's. Um, it has helped me be a better mom, a better individual. It has showed me that it does matter to care. I try to stay positive, you know, and Monday when we go, Miss Pam goes out of her way and she goes into her pocket. She makes she make sure that the girls are fed, that they're spoken to. She has girl time. She transports them by herself. Um, even when some of them are, you know, some of them are troubled and, you know, they have anger issues. She really takes her time and goes to the side. And regardless of what they did last week, she picks them up the next week. And she, pick, and she keeps picking them up. And it's like, it's okay, I love you. You're, you're, you are loved, regardless. Um, it, it's great for my daughter, because she's it's like she's the only child now, because my children are like 10 years apart. So it gives her that sense that she has other peers her age, where she can reflect not just on my point of view, you know, like Miss Pam's and other kids. And it, it's just, I, I love it. I really do love I Dare to Care. John A. Brown. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> My name is John A. Brown, and I attend Creative Arts Mercury Village Academy. I'm a junior. And I started I Dare to Care in 2010. Ooh, that was a long time ago. In 2010, um, when I first started, I was troubled. So Ms. Liliana. Liliana was talking about the troubled kids. I was one of them. Um, so I Dare to Care helped me so much. So when I first started I Dare to Care, I had a toolbox, right? So everybody have a, a toolbox in life, but in my toolbox, I was missing the fundamentals of life, like the, uh, what am I looking for, I'm sorry, the, the, the proper etiquette when you sit at a table and stuff like that. So I was missing those, those things to take me to the next level in life. And with I Daddy Care, it showed me how to speak properly and how to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and how to, how to walk into a room and speak to everyone, and how to, how to, uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and those things. <laughs> so yeah, so without that, I dare to care. My name is Johnny Brown, like I said, and today I play trombone, and um, I pray to God that I get into um, Berkeley Conservatory next year. Um, Yes, and now I was the first one to um, come to the program. Ooh, come to the program. And now my little sister is coming to my program, and my whole immediate family come to my program because of me, because I started that legacy. And so I'm here to build upon my toolbox and pass it down to her so she can pass it down to whomever. So, yes, me and my sister. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Sierra Mola. I'm in the seventh grade. I go to RT Cream Family School. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Latasha Allen. Good evening. My name is Latasha Allen. First, let me say that I'm honored to be here uh, to speak before you about I Dare to Care. I've been a senior mentor at I Dare to Care for the past eight years. I met Miss Pamela Grace in Baltimore when I was 11 years old. She used to come to Pine Point Middle School and do, do exactly what she does now, what, what she does take pride in doing now, which is teach young ladies from urban communities how to recognize the power of our voices and the value of our lives. At 11 years old, I remember looking at her saying to myself, wow, I would love to be this woman one day. When I was 15, 
Miss Pam began her journey with fighting breast cancer, and we lost contact for a while. When I turned 23, by the grace of God, we were reconnected, and she offered me the opportunity to come to check out I Dare to Care. When I walked into the room, I instantly smiled on the inside as I watched this fearless black woman speak with such grace, poise, and patience as our mentees crowd, crowded around her with admiration. It was then I decided that I wanted to commit myself to I Dare to Care. I Dare to Care has helped me, I Dare to Care has humbled me and taught me how to love regardless. It has helped me to develop strong relationships with my peers, friends, family, and how to look at life from a different a different but positive perspective. Through I Dare to Care, I have recognized that my life is bigger than just me. It has taught me that indeed healthy is the new normal. Since I have been a part of I Dare to Care, I had the opportunity to volunteer with other organizations birthed in the city of Camden, such as Dare to Dance, uh, Miracles and Motions, and so many others. Volunteering with Volunteering with these other organizations has allowed me to see just how powerful we can be when we come together as a city. Through I Dare to Care, I have learned the, the true definition of it takes a village to raise a child. I believe we can expand as an organization by having a bigger place to host our mentees, being able to provide better means of transportation, having more adults come out to volunteer, and being able to serve our community for more than just once a week. If we have the opportunity to host I Dare to Care more than just once a week, we can indeed make an even bigger impact on our youth in our city. However, we cannot do this alone. It's going to take the city to come together and stand together to make I Dare to Care bigger and better. I'm going to close my statement off with a quote by Nelson Mandela. There can be no keener revelation of society's soul than the way in the way it, we treat our children. Thank you. Sharp student government. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you this evening? I'm here from Harry C. Sharp School and I am currently the president of our student council. I run tutoring after school and manager for the boys basketball team. I would like to talk to you about my school. My school offers many after school activities that are run by teachers. Also, we are fortunate enough to have band class once a week. We are lent instruments for free and given instruction for free. I was also allowed to start an after school tutoring program. This enables me to help children who are struggling with math and English language arts. And you are also able to start a basketball team thanks to the Board of Education. So on behalf of everyone on the team, we would like to thank you. Um, hopefully, we can attend our game tomorrow. And if we win, that would be great. We are also hoping to see if we can get uniforms soon. Anyway, the school is really great. I get along with almost every single teacher. And our park scores are great. And we continue getting everyone on level and even surpassing. Um, I will now let you speak to Taina, the secretary. Hello, my name is Taina Lucia, and I've been at Sharp School for nine years now. I've been at Sharp School since kindergarten, and it's like a family to me. Miss Ruiz treats me good. She's like my mom to me. Um, but one of our concerns are um, we are asking for something. Due to Miss Ruiz walking around in the classrooms during sixth, seventh, and eighth grade lunch, Miss Ruiz can no longer be there. So if an administration person can oversee our lunch, we would be greatly appreciated. Because um, it's a little chaotic at lunch, and if we come back, our classes are a little bit disturbed. And if we don't have an administrator there, the kids will go back to class as talking and disturbing. As students such as I, I and Danahi, we are a little concerned about that. So if you can do that, that would be great and appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Arlethea Turlington. Nobody never pronounces my name right. 
but good evening and happy holidays. My name is Aretha Turlington. I'm a parent advocate for Parents for Great Camden Schools. My effort is directed in support for parents with students at Cooper's Point Family School in North Camden. There has been many changes at the school recently and hope to making it a great school once again. Uh, however, the ability of parents have Wait, to have their voice heard at the school level is non-existent, and many are frustrated at, by this. To many leaders, um, many leaders are failing to embrace the policies you have passed down. Each week I hear from parents with stories of neglect and, and frustration at the system and wonder at how individuals mistreat parents and belittle their concerns. Yet those are, those are some individuals still expect to have the rights of educating our students. It is simply time to, for us to focus and change this, this system to do better by our parents. Otherwise, parents are, are, will continue to seek other options. Superintendent, we need your support to assure that our schools and staff understand parents and students should be treated with respect. All right. All right. We cannot allow for those that under, underserve to steal the focus away from, from those working hard each day in our tra tra excuse me, traditional schools. It's unfair in their efforts rob our children of their future and dreams. Thank you. And Superintendent, I would like for you to uh, attend one of my community meetings that I'm going to plan real soon. Thank you. Kelly Francis. Good evening, uh, board members, superintendent. Uh, first off, I'm going to uh, talk about this uh, de demolition of Camden High School. Uh, and I want to say emphatically that the plan to demolish the castle, which represents 100 years of African American history in the city of Camden. It is both evil and racist. Okay? That's what the plan is. Make no mistake about that. Now let's go back 400 years. 400 years ago, Europeans invaded the African continent, captured and enslaved Africans, and brought them to America 400 years ago where they were dehumanized, brutalized, and, uh, and treated as property for 250 years. And then, of course, there was another 100 years of uh, Jim Crow, where they, those same d descendants of those Africans were uh, treated as second-class citizens and discriminated against and segregated for another 100 years. Now, when they were brought here as slaves in chains, uh, the families were separated. And that was a deliberate and intentional action to, to separate the families and sell off the children and the wives of the slaves individually so that the history of their continent, the history of their culture, could not be handed down from generation to generation that was done purposely to destroy the history of those people. That's how you control people. When you destroy their history, then you can control them because they have no sense of purpose or history or self-worth, which is what's happening today in Iraq and Syria. This is why ISIS and Al-Qaeda are destroying the history of Iraq and Syria, so they can control the people. Now, fast forward 100 years as of December, 2017. 400 years later, now we have descendants of Europeans who've come into Camden 
to destroy our history. The descendants of Europeans have come into Camden to destroy our history. 100 years is what the castle represents of excellence and achievement by African Americans. That's the only thing we have to show our 300 year presence in the city of Camden. But at the same time, they have preserved Pomona Hall 300 years later, built 300 years ago, they're preserving that, which represents enslavement of Africans, brutalization, and dehumanization of Africans. But they're saving that. The time is up. They're, they're, they're saving that. No, no. You all need to hear this, okay? This is your history I'm talking about. And, and, but they're saving that, even though it's 300 years old. But Cameron High, our history, 100 years, they're just showing it. And we know why. You know, be, because the city's under the control of, of uh, and those descendants of Europeans that I'm speaking of, you all know who they are, right. uh, Chris Christie. Thank you, Mr. Charlie McKenna. How, Mr. Francis, uh, The North Crosses, they are the descendants of Europeans.
Keith Howell. Good evening. I'm advocating for the black and Latino students that I serve at Camden High on a daily basis. Tonight I will address the lack and need of strong black male leadership in this district and particularly Camden High. I would love to express more about Camden High, but I only have three minutes. Before I start, we need to commend the heroic voices to save our public schools. Many times in this Western society, in the words of our shining prince Malcolm X, quote, we hate what we should be loving and we love what we should be hating. I love and applaud the courageous stamina and love that Monique Ragsdale, Vita Neal, Roncha Dickinson, Amen. who stand on the shoulders of Sarah Davis, Joyce Carter, and Claudia Cream have given to save public schools in this city. I applaud the black male presence of Dr. Keith Benson of the CEA, who stands on the shoulders of our non-compromising elders and the epitome of strong black leadership in this city, Rob Dickerson and Mongoliso Davis. All have been criticized by the superintendent. The agenda of our superintendent, Rahanaford, has been to dismantle the fatherhood principles of strong black men who are needed to advance our youth and lead them to their wealthy place. What happened to the men who embraced those principles? What happened to Mr. Brian Medley, the principal of Pine Point? Why isn't Mr. Dalia, the principal of East Camden High, still here? After he raised the test scores, but still you allowed mastery to come in. Why was Arthur Taylor released, a strong role model for the students at Creative Arts? Why was Jamal Dickinson suspended for doing his fatherhood duty? What happened to Mr. Shanklin and Jerry Brown of Camden High? And why am I being harassed at Camden High? Since I spoke last month, the principal has stopped yelling at students and staff on the intercom. But still, we have a serious problem in the area of discipline. A fatherhood principle, principle. Principal. Our cell phone usage in the, in the classrooms is horrible. While teachers are teaching, the students aren't receiving any consequences for speaking on, te on uh, the telephone or sending text messages. I have written up several students and nothing has happened. Recently, I was told by a young administrator that students could still be a success with cell phone usage in the classroom. College professors allow this usage. End of quote. Well, I have you know people are getting fired for cell phone usage on jobs. So how are we preparing students by allowing them to be disruptive in the classroom? Among other, among other things, there needs to be enforcement of the cell phone rules at Camden High. Teachers are threatened and written up for the slightest infractions, but students do not receive any chastening for violating the district cell policy. A strong black male figure would administer discipline and realize that discipline is essential to a Mr. healthy Howell, environment. Mr. Howell, your time is up. Please wrap up. I will continue to speak out on behalf of our students on the shoulders of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Honorable Marcus Garvey, and the grace of a letter cream. In conclusion, I am anchored by Psalms 82 to defend the poor and fatherless, execute justice for the oppressed, defend the poor and needy, and deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Thank you. Angie Ruiz. Good evening, members of the board, and specifically Superintendent Paymon. Good evening, everyone else. Um, I'm, I'm Angie Ruiz. I'm a parent from Harry C. Sharp School. This is my daughter, Emily Diaz. She is in pre-K. She is four years old. Our students at Harry C. Sharp School are throwing their lunches away. And if our students are throwing their lunches away and not eating their lunches, that means our children are heading back to class with little or no food in their stomachs. Our students deserve good quality lunches, lunches that also look appetizing. Making lunches that entice students to eat is the, ch is the challenge, and, and Aramark is not fair, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> is not faring so well against that challenge. Since September, I have attempted to address my concerns several times with Aramark employees at the school level. I have also talked to Aramark at the corporation level, and they have not followed up. We at Sharp School are not settling for these services Aramark is providing. We need other options, and we strongly suggest other providers are considered for the services when the time comes. I am aware of the upcoming, I'm sorry, upcoming meeting taking place January 4th, 2018 at 5 p.m. at CREAM. In the meantime, I have brought with me visual samples of what has been served to our students by Aramark in the past month. I have visuals to pass out if one of you would like to pick up, please. The first visual is for the superintendent. The rest is for the members. And I'm not sure um, in your little uh, thing that you showed earlier what school lunch that was, but that was definitely most not from um, Sharp School. Students at Sharp School are being served lunches that look disgusting and are either burnt or undercooked. Aramark should care about the quality of food and the way the food looks when it is served. They are just throwing food on a tray and, and not caring whether it's cooked, burnt, or appetizing and calling it a meal. That's unacceptable. The district is wasting millions of dollars in children who are not eating. School lunch is critical to our students' health and well-being, and it ensures that students have the nutrition they need throughout the day to learn. And what Aramark is serving is putting our children back to the mystery meat days. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Emily, you ready? What do you think about your school lunch? Say it. We practice. Say it. What do you think about your school lunch? What do you tell me every day? This is a personal thing, but my daughter about a week ago asked me, Mommy, can you please pack my lunch? I asked her why. She said, it is gross. It makes my tummy hurt. Tell me what I should tell my daughter if I'm not even allowed to pack her lunch. Please, we need help and we need it now. Samuel Washington. Good evening. My name is Samuel Washington. And before I get to what I uh, came to say, I want to say the young lady who just spoke to one of my former students at Veterans Memorial Family School. God bless her. And I hope that you all listen to what she's uh, addressing you with. I also want to say that I went to school with Miss Grayson, Baltimore, um, the, of the Dare to Dance. And God bless her and what they're trying to do. It sounds very uh, admirable. Once again, my name is Samuel Washington. Um, I was born in, in Camden. I was raised in Camden. I was educated in Camden. I now work and teach in Camden. I live in Camden. And when, and although I don't get the chance to say it, I do want to say it tonight. I love the people of Camden, and the reason is because I am Camden. I have to say a few things tonight, and I'm gonna keep it succinct. I want it to come in the spirit of, if anything seems negative, as constructive criticism. That's what I want it to seem like. But I wanna say that I see the frustration of the, the, the city of Camden, the people of Camden, when they come to the meeting. I see how questions are asked of you, of this administration, and those questions are skirted and or averted. There, you pick and choose the questions you want to answer, the soft rolled, soft questions, and you disregard the rest. That's what I notice. It's an observation, again, constructive criticism. Um, and more particularly, I want to say, I think it was a demonstration of this administration's policy and while you roll, I was here at last meeting, and I want to apologize. I felt like my behavior, although what I want to say was, was accurate, how I said it was not. And I was, asked to stay and listen to someone from the up here. I stayed and listened with the promise that I would get to speak. And then that person's authority, what I felt was usurped, and I didn't get that chance. When someone said, no, we're going to end this. I feel that that's 
demonstrative of what I, again, observed of, of this board. Lastly, I want to say, I want you to consider, like Bill Nye, the science guy would say, consider the following. The people come here, and they come here, we come here to speak, because we have two options when it comes to making change, positive change in our community. And only one of those options is legal. And that's coming to you, the powers that be, ordained of God, and bringing it to you in the hope that, and in the belief that some one of you will take the reasoning, the sincere thoughts that we're conveying to you, take it to heart, and sincerely change, like uh, Xavier said, the leadership change and make a difference. Have a happy night, and God bless you. Thank you. Jackie Shin. Good evening. Um, I was at the last board meeting and I had put questions uh, forth to the superintendent that um, I had to again ask via email and he did respond to them although not quite answer them. Um, they pertain to class sizes, the state mandate of 150 minutes of physical education for our students, our special education students, and school security. Regarding class size, your response was that no school district in America can afford small classes for every grade, for example, 12 to 17 students in a class. Your policy is 21 students for K to three, but our first and second grade at Cream have been over policy since day one. We've been told it's fine. Should we wait until we have 40 students in a class before they are finally creating two classes for those grade levels so we have 20 in each section? It's the board's policy, the district policy that's being violated. For physical education, New Jersey state law is that our students receive 100 minutes of health and phys ed per week. Our students do not get this at every school. Your response was that recess counts towards the 150 minutes as per New Jersey Department of Education. Yes, recess can count, but there are guidelines to follow for it to count, and these guidelines are not followed. And what about the schools that cannot have recess, either because there are no facilities, such as cream, inside, or they can't go outside when it's raining, when it's too hot, when it's too cold, when it's snowing. Or sometimes recess is taken away because of behavior. So why is the law still not being followed? Regarding our special needs students, our classes are mainstreamed at cream during art, music, computers, and physical education. Superintendent, you stated that the special ed students should be educated in the least restrictive environment for electives. Again, physical education is not an elective. It is mandated like literacy. I agree with the mainstreaming, but the way it's implemented, once again, class sizes are over the maximum. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. Class sizes are over the maximum, and now those students are... are forced to be in classes that are over the maximum, is it benefiting them? Has anyone followed up to see how they're, they're doing? I don't think so. Also, the classes, the classrooms themselves are not situated to have such large numbers. They're set up for the maximum number of students. Literacy, math, science, social studies, they're not dealing with 30 kids per class. They're dealing with no more than 24. So where are we to teach these students? Security. We now have two security officers at Cream. Security started yesterday, second officer was called back. I'd like to know if he will remain there all year. You also stated in your email that even though the Cream enrollment went up this year, that we were fine with one security officer because the climate and culture coordinator supplements for security. I spoke with our operations manager. He said that per superintendent, climate and culture coordinators are not part of security. Thank so you, which Ms. Shin. Would you please wrap up your comments? I will wrap up my comments on this one thing. I had a trip last week. Two medical students could not attend because we didn't have money for a nurse. I sent emails two weeks regarding we needed to have a nurse. No one responded to me until two days before that trip. I had to tell those kids they couldn't go. 
Then when I went on the trip with my other eight students, I saw that two adults who were not chaperoning students were on that trip. And I wonder, is that why the nurse couldn't go and my two students had to stay back? Thank you. Vida Neal. No, 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 it just keeps getting worse. I want to start out by um, making a quote for Harriet Tubman. Had they known they were slaves, I could have saved more. Let me tell you something. The institutional racism that this district has displayed to the Afro-American community is terrible. I have pinpointed that the Airmark franchise serves slop to the kids in the Afro-American school. Certain schools in our district don't even get that food. They have no main menu under state guidelines. They're supposed to have a menu. I've done some research. In Cherry Hill, Airmark, you can go online and see what your kid is eating. You can't do that here in Camden because we don't even have a menu. And the stuff is a prison tier of food. Aramont has already been violated across the country for the corn with the GMOs. They give our kids corn at least three times a week. They are trying to kill our children. And you know this, Mr. Mohan, I've been coming to this mic for one year and eight months screaming about Aramont. So any of you who don't say you don't know it, and another thing I want to talk about is why haven't our meetings been broadcasted for the last three months? Because you don't want about everybody to hear the horrible things that's been going on in our school district? Yeah. Put it on there! <laughs> you can't even post the inquiry right to all these nice articles about you. Well, Ms. Biden got an article I want to write about you. I'm going to write a report card wherever you go. And I'm going to send that little nasty report card to whatever town you're going to. Because Google won't tell me. Shooting dice. Alex Jones has shut down all the bathrooms for once. One, and he had a 
security guard there. Now the boys and girls just go in the bathroom together. Yes. So I'm going to just tell you what's going on in your school. In places and areas that's not being watched, our children is having S, E, and you put the last one. Meta, uh, Vida, 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 I'm asking, I've talked with you, not just, we need respect, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to do what I've asked you to do, when, what you come, that's what I'm asking for. Thank you, Vida. And I'm going to say to the public, to all of you, if there are issues and concerns that you have and you follow them through your school with your principal, uh, li no, li listen, to what I, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Follow the procedure in your school. Then you go to your solution center, and when you don't get it there, it goes to administration. And if it's not taking place there, I need you to write it up and then you bring it to us at the board. And then we, the board, can talk with the superintendent and dealing with it, instead of it being delivered to you this way. What you have just talked about, there does bring great concern to all of us, but we have to be given that information. I did talk to the superintendent about a couple of pieces, but that's the issue. If you give it to me in writing, we can support and work with you. If you're just being yelled at, it's hard to deal with the situations that way. So please, work with us, put it in writing, follow your procedures, and then we can work together. Thank you. Monique Rasdale. Good evening. I have some um, concerns, and this doesn't go to the principal or the school district. This is what the SDA promised us when they said they were going to demolize Camden High School. I opened the documents. There are no documents for any swing space money spent for Camden High students before they moved in or big picture learning. So I would like to know, where is the list and where is the funding for our Camden High School? You mean you just sent those kids in that school this year? not prepared for anything. I hear the students tell me they have no lockers. The security, the fights is crazy there every day almost. I don't know what you guys be paying attention, but instead of everybody being on a board and advisory member, maybe need to step out sometime, go past these schools, go in these schools, and find out what's going on. Also, um, the security. I've talk, been talking to y'all since y'all laid the security off. I don't know what, what was y'all thinking, why it was, what was in the budget or not, but I told you that was going to be a concern. And so y'all going to wait till somebody get hurt and somebody sue y'all before y'all do something about it. You can't go by the ratios to numbers and data in a community where you know it's hostile and you keep changing around staff every year, the principals, the teachers. That doesn't work. There is a whole community of a school and you keep breaking it down. Next, I want to talk about the list of inventory for alumni. I'm glad to see that they was all in there looking at the stuff, but we asked for a list of the inventory, and I'm asking as vice president of the Camden High Alumni Association. Also, the gifted and talent program, I'm glad you updated on that, and you said it was going to start in two schools from grades three to five. You didn't mention what two schools they were going to be in. You haven't decided yet? Okay. Um, also, the media libraries, I still hear about the media libraries. I know we got an update there. There was one at Cooper. There was one at Wilger Wilson. They're not being utilized. I still need to know more information. And how can you make this district wide? Because that is a state law mandate. Also, um, I was also going to talk about the field locker room. I don't think many people know that that was um, closed down and it was condemned. You have not spoken to the public about that and haven't told us any update. You know, this this spring, well, this summer coming, our children's going to be able need a place to practice and a facility to practice at. I'm just so upset because y'all were so in a rush to demolize this school. Nobody took the time to actually go through the procedure to make sure our kids had a, a place where we had $2 million we could have put for the swing face funding to get those schools ready for our children. And then I see that I was there when they were looking at the locker room, how much we complained about that locker room. And it takes y'all so long to make movement on something, something, but when it's something that you guys want do y'all do it by yesterday that's it
Keith Benson. Um, in honor of um, the late Miss Cream, one of our members who uh, went to school while she was principal and uh, used to be a teacher here um, asked me to read this. She prepared this and asked me to read it here at the meeting. The castle on the hill build, bids farewell to his queen. CEA joins in with tens of thousands of former students and employees in mourning the loss of Miss Valetta Twine Cream, whose passing occurred yesterday. Miss Cream had a unique talent that is in short supply today of balancing power and grace. As a student, you do not get to know the principal if there was an infraction or if, or if you were a shining star. There is a place in her heart for everyone. So many speak of the relationship she had with them because she made each of her students feel special and inspired them to believe in their dreams. She had the same expectation for the staff. As a role model to them, she listened and welcomed their ideas. She provided them with support to venture out, bring in new programs, personalize and expand lessons, whatever it took to make connections. As a result, her consistent encouragement and caring, many staff members began to regard her as a true friend. So many lives have been touched and directed, or if needed, redirected by the soft-spoken petite woman with an enormous heart. Her presence was powerful and motivational at the same time, and she will be greatly missed. Thank you, Ms. Cream, for your dedication, your dedicated service, and being such a bright light for the students at Camden. And that was by one of our members. In reference to what I came to speak of today, I passed this out to everyone. Hopefully you guys all got it and read it. Um, very early on when I was, uh, when the superintendent was first appointed by Governor Christie, the, the, the first meeting that after he was appointed, I attended bidding the superintendent, uh, you know, goodwill and, and welcome into the district. When I first got elected, I had a meeting with him trying to let him know that I care about our schools being the best places to learn and that what do we need to do to keep our schools open? What do we need to do to make sure our kids have what they need, that the schools have what they need? Because our schools ultimately serve our community and our communities need our schools and our schools need our community. But since then, I've only had one meeting with the superintendent because if I talk directly to someone and someone lies to me, it's a waste of my time and it's disrespectful. So I've never come to this podium at any board meeting and told lies to the public or to you guys. I told you guys I have a dissertation of the very first principal of Uncommon Schools talking about how terrible his school was. The superintendent has a copy of that and so does the board president. This is the principal of the school that was forced here talking about how terrible that school is. I asked you board members, I said, would you guys go to the school? Have you seen it for yourselves? And I didn't get an answer. Fair enough. I said Camden enrollment was funneling kids into Renaissance schools. I said I had a script. It's sitting in my desk. I don't come here to waste anybody's time. I don't come here to lie. Board President, you said we can't just bring up issues here at the board meeting. We need to go Thank through the you, proper channels. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Would you please wrap up I'm your not, comments? I'm not going to stop talking. We know this. And secondly, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, but while this is on my head, we have a $350 million budget. You are like the third business administrator in four years. Did you ever ask why you're sitting in that chair and why some of your other people are rotating with a budget this large? But now that I'm back on track, these issues that I'm talking, the, the issues that were brought up about security, I sat in the superintendent's office, not his office, down on the seventh floor, and told him our building principals are screaming for more security. This is not new. What we're seeing right now is indifference. He doesn't care if our students get hurt because he's not here to care. Governor Christie is a racist, pure and simple. He appointed him. He didn't appoint him because he's going to do right by our community. He's completely comfortable having our kids and our schools do without. He knows that our classrooms are over, are, 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 uh, are enrolled. He knows it. He doesn't care about breaking the law because he does not care. He is not here to care. Let's go through the schools where we have over-enrolled classrooms. I'm sorry, Ms. Wilson, I'm sorry. I I, listen, I had this pent up. I had this pent up for so long. Please, I'm sorry. I really, please, please, please. So at 
Let me just, can I just finish this up? I had, can I, can I, I had to talk to just a couple, just one, just one minute. All right. Cream is over, it has, has kids, I mean, has school, has classrooms where it's overcrowded. H.B. Wilson, Sharp, Woodrow Wilson, Yorkship, Veterans, Dudley, Cattle. The superintendent knew about this since August. Rosa Trent. Good evening. I have a couple concerns. Um, I have reached out to you guys several on several occasions. I have spoken to Miss Perry. I've spoken to Kevin Schaefer. I've spoken to you, Paymon. Um, I still need updates on the maintenances on all the schools. Because we were in Forest Hill today. I was actually with one of your board members today. And she was there. And she was looking at the mold up top in the cafeteria. She was looking at the roof leaking, the floor gone, and the mats that were torn and ripped with duct tape over them. These are concerns. We have children with asthma. We have children with health issues that all this can affect them on a daily basis. I met with... Joelle from Aramark, um, they're not up to par at all. Not up to par. So they were put on a deadline for December 28th to show that they're going to do something so that when the kids return from break, they have a suitable lunch. My daughter was one of the ones that got poisoned at that school more than once. I was getting a phone call every day after lunch to go pick her up because she was throwing up more than once. I've been packing my daughter's lunch for over two weeks. My daughter has not been sent home from school yet. I want you to hold these principals accountable. These principals in these different schools, they're not handling what they need to handle. They're not being a disciplinary. They're not getting in contact with parents. They're, they're letting these kids run the school. This is what, who you hired. Did you do a background check on these people? Did you do recommendation letters? Did you do anything? I'm just curious because the way that they're acting is inappropriately. The parents need to be notified. The students need to get that parental supervision. We're not there all the time. This is your job. You, we put them in these schools for them to get educated, not to be doing what they're doing, not to have the drug issues, not to have the sexual issues in the gymnasium, which we've had parents witness. I'm getting my information from my parents. They call me. They say, we're having this issue. And what do I do? I reach out to you guys, correct? This is, these are important issues. I need my kids to be safe. The fact that I have a seventh grader in the Camden High building in the annex, and the fact that my child is at risk now because you have people in there with records. You have people in there who, who are unsavory characters, and you have them in there with our little kids. This is a problem. You guys said this transition would be easy, would be seamlessly. It hasn't been nothing but. We still don't have a PA system, which I was notified that we're getting in January. About time, school started in September. We, we still have vacancies. Just because it's the annex doesn't mean that people are not leaving there. The principal's not even spending half of the day there like he should. Two days out of the week, he's spending in the annex. Two. You tell me how that's acceptable. 
you're hiring these people. Then you have Corby and Forrest Hill making racial statements, which he has to his own staff members. So please, do, do not say, oh, you're wrong. You're not wrong. Check your sources, because I'm hearing it from the staff members themselves. I still have not received an update on the mold stats that I requested last month. I want you to have somebody come in there and tell me the numbers. Let me know that it's acceptable for my kids who all have asthma to be in your buildings. I want to know. I don't want you to tell me. I don't want you to send me no letter saying they were cleared. No, I want to see the numbers. And you have to provide that for us. You have to. Thank you, Ms. Trent. No, 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 I still have more. Your time is, um, your oh, time is over. Nice. Please wrap it up. Okay, so you have students in several schools at this point with the curriculum that it is, they're not learning anything for college. It's not helping them at all. You have students, thank you, baby. You have students who are not prepared for college. My son being one who's bored out of his mind, who's getting in trouble. A, an honor roll student who got skipped a grade. Because Thank he's you, bored in class. What are you guys going to do? When are you going to... Victoria Peller. Victoria Pellot. Good evening. My name is Victoria Pallotta and I'm an employee of the Camden City Public School, at, excuse me, Public Schools. Currently, I'm serving at Woodrow Wilson High School. First, I would like to thank all of the parents for sending your students to Woodrow Wilson. I'm here today to share some of the good news that's going, that's happening at Woodrow Wilson. With the support of administration and staff, more students are coming to class and appreciate the culture of the school that supports student engagement. Wilson now really feel, excuse me, now feels like a real school, a school from your childhood experiences with fun activities and learning. In this evidence-based world, we know our climate is changing for the better. Our enrollment is up since September. Over 125 students have come to us from various charter schools and, of course, from the Caribbean as we support our brothers and sisters in need. Our homecoming dance hosted close to 300 students without one incident. Our football team, as you spoke on, uh, is to be commended for, for its winning season, bigger and better next year. Last night, 88% of our seniors and their parents came to senior night to receive help with their FASAs, and we met with great success. Volunteer teachers and community members and college uh, professionals came out and supported our families. Activities like this will help and hire generations. If you were the first person in your family to go to college, you know how much you struggled. And now there's a foundation laid for those children that will come behind. It was a beautiful night. I'm sorry that nobody from the Board of Education could make it. Supporting our students and parents to complete FAFSA forms will move an entire community forward. With the support of the staff, and our bilingual principal, Mr. James, Woodrow Wilson is moving forward. And now for the ask, what can the district do to support us moving our students forward? Woodrow Wilson needs an increase in the technology budget. Teachers have to share broken laptops. Today my student said, Ms. Pilat, number seven and number six doesn't work. Many of the computers are just sitting there. I've had Mr. Yuri from now you replaced that, outsourced those people, and now um, just sitting there, they're waiting for Minecraft, I believe that's their name, Mineshaft, I like to call them, to come out and service the computers where Mr. Yuri and the people who are working for the Board of Education uh, did a wonderful job up until now. I don't see the same uh, responses. The next thing I would also uh, strongly suggest in the area of technology, and we go back to having technology coordinators within our school. Yes, I am 61 and proud of it. My last term paper I typed 
on a manual turn paper, on a manual computer. In order to keep up with technology, we you know, grab something from this person, grab something, but our students deserve more. When we had tech coordinators like Tanya Wilson in our building, we were constantly being presented with the innovation that was coming down the pike. We were able to share it with our students. Thank you, Ms. And we Pella. were able Would to move. I have one comments? more thing, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Most importantly, my ask this year is that you do not fire Rift, Rice, whatever you want to call it, the teachers that we currently have in place. Somebody at HR always makes the decision, oh, we have too many teachers. And then you let them go. They get better jobs other places. And then you try to call them back and they're not there. And then we're left with voids. Our students need one thing. Your children need one thing. All children need one thing. Amen. Consistency. That's Thank right. you very much. Did you read my notes? Right. All right. Please, human resources, don't shaft these young people. They come here with their clean faces. They come here to give back to this community. They come here, and then we send them home, and then, oh, by the way, no, we need you back. And of course, by then, because they are talented, they're working somewhere else, and we're left with an inconsistent turnaround period for our students. Thank you very much. Thank Merry you Christmas, your... Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, and Happy Kwanzaa. God bless and God rest Loretta Cream, my uh, principal at Camden High School. Thank you for your report, Ms. Pollock. <laughs> Brian Morton. See, I need my glasses. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Morton. I'm the executive director of Parents for Great Camden Schools. My organization seeks to uh, partner with parents from across all school types, um, all school types uh, across the district, and the host of increasing parental voice um, so that we can work toward one common goal, and that's um, increased student success. Um, tonight, I wish to talk about accountability. Um, and I would like to ask um, how the district is working to increase it when it pertains to student success. I would like to remind all here that, the, that most schools in our city attach student success to staff retention and that the only party that does not is this one. Um, tonight I've heard um, many voices clamoring for um, different things from your ouster to a return to the past. Um, and sometimes, I, 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 and I love you all, but even in my family, I think, you know, sometimes we can be from different planets. Because I can recall, you know, like the last 20 years um, here in the district. Um, and I can see how the lack of accountability has led to us consistently losing talented teachers, consistently has led to parents fleeing from the traditional schools, and, continued, and continually leads to a partisan fight. Um, for control of our board and for control of our schools. Um, and most of the time it's, it's led by, you know, individuals, organizations, you know, those that have a vested interest in maintaining a certain status um, or, or, or status quo. And I like to remind each and every one of you, especially as we go into the new year, that no one said that this job was going to be easy. Um, in fact, you know, um, I still wonder, superintendent and my wife and I most often, like, why did we take this job? You know, um, we were, you know, when, when my wife began and when you began, one of the worst districts in the, in, in, in the state. Um, we had a, a predecessor and, and this board had to go through um, a prior superintendent that chose to treat this job sort of like a no-show, um, you know, um, a, a, a job. And many contracts were approved um, that sought to remove accountability and responsibility for outcomes of our students from the parties most involved in educating our students. As um, we've seen, you've pushed back. Um, so have many others pushed back, calling for, for things to return to how they were. And why? Because most of us are working to change a system um, which is operated as if in spite of um, children's failure, a system that, that would continue to have its membership fed, 
um, without consequence of shortcomings for our students or a lack of effort. Even today, as we, you begin new contract negotiations, there is a push for increase in benefits and a decrease in accountability. It is everyone's fault um, except those on the front line. And many times I hear from our parents as I'm out meeting with them how it is often laid, the blame is laid directly on them. And I, it's Thank on you, Mr. Morton. Would you please wrap up your comments? Absolutely. Um, too often it is put on parents who themselves were not educated historically in this failed system, yet are being asked constantly to assume responsibility for the outcomes of their students. Some may attempt to misconstrue my comments tonight as an attack on educators, but it is the furthest from the truth. It is an attack on insanity, the insanity which ties us to a system unlike any other. In no other industry does the consumer lack the ability for grievance and reconciliation for sort shortcomings from the organization providing a service, except here. I ask that you include public hearings as part of the contract negotiations so that parents can have a voice in them. I want parents to have a seat at the table in deciding who and how their children will be educated. While many would prefer, you know, a back office style negotiation, I suggest public ones. I suggest that there be a stance for increased accountability and responsibility among school administrators and educators for the outcomes of students and a doing away with excuse making. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Barfield. Good evening, everyone. Um, I think um, like two months ago, it's basically everything is kind of being redundant now in reference to coming up saying the same old things, same old things. And I want to go back to what I mentioned before about the state of um, what I'm seeing here at these board meetings and the functioning of our superintendent in this cognitive dissonance. And it's the uncomfortable feeling caused by the two contrary ideals simultaneously and the ideals and the beliefs and the perceptions that you're trying to um, rational the decisions that you're making. And it contradicts everything that you do through your actions, through which your words and what you have presented since you came here. So one of the things that was mentioned even like earlier today when the parents was talking about the school climate and the fact about the, tr the parents not being accepted and welcome in these schools. When you first came here, you did a listening tour. You went around and you said through your findings, through, through surveys and everything, and that you had to improve on the school climate and culture in these schools for the parents, making, making them more welcoming. To this day, we still have parents, I mean, um, principals who haven't embraced um, setting up parent groups in the schools. And just like the parent was saying, um, they're not even um, welcoming them in the school, let alone setting up what is required for them to spend the money that's in the school under the parental involvement piece. Right. So through that, through the leadership, which comes from the top, you know, it it's boggles my mind that even as being part of DPAC, that we've been having these continual conversations for four years since you came here and trying to implement before, you know, no disrespect, parents from great public schools came on the scene. All right. You know, and we're still here fighting, trying to get parents more involved and engaged. So then it, it, it boils down to what you mentioned earlier about Aramark and then doing this community wellness committee. That was already done before you came here. The district, and if, and if the principals knew the policies, we have a wellness policy and it's part of our policy in the district. Is this the matter, and you have a, uh, health and safety committee that should be up and functioning in all of our schools. So part of your wellness committee policy should be implemented and, and then you won't have to be dealing with having these community involvement, 
you, the parents and the community is overseeing what's taking place within their school, and especially when it comes to the lunch. So, and then when we talk about what you promoted earlier in reference to safety and providing safety and safe schools, your contradiction again is that when you cut security, you basically set back what we're dealing with now with unreported incidents and leadership that's not addressing parents coming to them in reference to them children being assaulted. That's a concern. The other concern is the fact with our technology. You've cut our technology to the point that we ain't even qualified for our E-rate, which is so many, uh, which is a large percentage that will help address our staffing within our, in our district. And just Thank like you, with Mr. The, Barker. Um, would you the, kindly the, wrap up your comments? The individual, yes. This is what the um, teacher just spoke um, from Woodrow Wilson in reference to the tech coordinator. This, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's hurtful to understand and know what's happening within our district when it comes to technology and the barriers that we have, over, that we have this, this impeding our students from reaching and, and, and achieving higher test scores and even instruction because our, our school is now what? 80% um, digital based instruction, but we don't have the technology set up and then we don't have the support and, and, and defining on this one, you've outsourced and you have these contractors that are coming in that aren't providing the service that they should be providing and technology is one of it. So my question is to this board, what are y'all gonna do in reference to addressing the superintendent and bringing safety and technology back and staffing back to our schools? Desmond Benson. Good evening, Desmond Benson, North Kennedy resident. I would like to say happy holidays to everybody gathered here this evening. Um, over the past year, I've been, uh, have the pleasure of working with a number of parents in the early childhood area, in, in childhood area in kindergarten. What I have found in that is far often the pool of quality options for them is, is very small. Many, um, um, many parents are scrambling in, in search of good schools. As such, it is important that we continue to look how the district can address these needs and expand the quality options while also working to improve early childhood so the students are being prepared for the grades ahead of them rather than simply being a babysitter. We have, the many, we have many schools that are not committed to working with parents so that they can understand how best to support that student's learning at home. And this is much needed support as some parents have not had the educational experience themselves. Some will blame the parents of Camden for not understanding what is required of them. And others will say that it is not the role of schools to fill the gap for parents' shortcomings. I'm, I have to say that exactly what our schools should be doing. This is exactly what our schools should be doing. Not for parents, but for the community we serve and the students under our care. I would like to advocate for the creation of both parent academies that seek to provide regular trainings for parents to better understand the curriculum and how is it being implemented into each school so that they become equipped to support their students and hold the schools accountable for the shortcomings in students' education here in Camden. Additionally, I would like to ask that the regular community meetings be held at each school so the parents have a collective opportunity to hear positive things according to the schools and also have the ability to air their own concerns. In my work, I have I've come across far too many parents who have shared stories of how they have been belittled by school staff and administrators. This is dis discouraging to them and to me, and is not of the spirit of our community or the role that the schools have played traditionally in Camden. If our students' outcomes are going to get better, we have to get better or at how we work in the community. Thank you.
Jennifer Perez. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Perez and I too am a parent for, for Great Camden Schools. I'm here tonight to ask about what is being done in the improvement and to improve the climate and culture at Wilson High School. Recently we had an incident where a student was beat and his two fingers was broken. And I have a child that attends Wilson, a freshman. And I'm very concerned and I stand up here to say this. He has A's and B's and has a vision of going to play in the NFL. And I support him and I talk to him about what he learns in school every day. And he came and told me and said, Mom, I can't take this no more. As a mother, it's hurtful because he shouldn't be going to school and telling me, Mom, I can't take this no more. And seeing his classmates being attacked. Now I'm hearing that students have brought weapons on school grounds. I'm also upset with parents from Wilson because instead of to do the right thing, they chose to do the wrong thing. And that's a black influence to their job. I would like to know what we can do including myself as a parent and you guys as board members to better the situation and ensure their safety so these kids can actually be successful. Because in, in, in our city, it's stressful. And I don't want my kid to get distracted when he's doing good. I will see my kids succeed, not only in high school, but in college. So if I have to do what I have to do to help the school get better, then so be it. And I also hear that nine securities are in Wilson. And I've heard a lot of people talk about staffing. And we need staff. Them students in Wilson are not small and they're not tiny. I've seen firsthand how they were disrespectful to the principal. And I need to know if he's doing his job because I don't want to wake up he getting a phone call that my something happened to my son. Or something happened to him walking home from school or in school, where school should be a safe zone for them, where they should be learning, learning, not wondering how they're going to protect themselves going to and from school. And now I hope that I don't have to come back here and talk about it again. I hope something gets done. You know, I I know that you, Mr. Paymon, you have done your job. You sat with parents and you talked about them. And you have came to my house and talked and sat with my neighborhood parents. And I thank you for that. But I'm coming to you as a concerned parent or worried parent. You know, take the time out and go to these schools and see. Is that That's what I'm asking. See. Because it's different to, to hear, but it's another thing to see. And if you need to understand, maybe you need to put your kid in a school, in our school system. Thank you, young lady. Sean Brown. Sarah Jocelyn. Sarah Jocelyn, Cherry Hill. I wanted to make sure that you knew I did bring a pop-up library. We need to make books available to our kids so they can make a choice of what they're reading. So if anybody didn't get a book and wants to take a book home and there's some out in the hall, please take them. I visited a couple of libraries in Camden City. As you may know, um, children are not able to check out a book and take them home from the Camden City School Libraries. Um, there's no librarians, there's no, there's no system. Uh, choosing what you read is not there. Those books are not able to be used and taken home. 
Uh, classrooms can use them. You can go into the library if a teacher is there, but without staff and support, those books are not being used. And while we have a, a movement towards uh, digital books, print books are still very important, and surveys show children prefer print books. Uh, classroom libraries are great, but kids need to be able to take books home so they can use them. I saw in here that, you're, uh, that there are a couple of schools that are planning to offer ways to encourage parents on how they can help their children with literacy, and that's admirable. All schools need to be doing that. I was hoping at this point I would see programs which are uh, promoting literacy and reading, perhaps reading competitions coming into the new year, um, engaging the students in activities in the school. I don't see it in this report. Um, reading's fundamental for success. We really need to be doing it beyond lexiles. We need to be looking at having a choice so that kids want to read. I visited the Woodrow Wilson Library, um, which is about 50% of the number of books that it should be, and it's not sorted in a way that students can necessarily easily access. Um, setting up a library after you've redone a space is a major undertaking. We've all, we're in the second year of this process here. Now, I want you to know there is no physical library for Camden High School. There is no physical library for Big Picture Learning Academy. What they are allowed to do is to use the library at Woodrow Wilson. Oh, well, where's the transportation? How are they supposed to get there? How are they supposed to, to use that? How are they supposed to have the staff and adults there making it available? Um, I, I haven't seen that enablement here. Big Picture Learning Academy had the opportunity to buy their own books that they wanted for their curriculum three years ago, but they're boxed up. So, uh, I, was, I asked to go to Creative Arps and Brim. They weren't available to visit until January, so I'm looking forward to visiting there. I visited Cream, I visited Caddo. These libraries are not able to be used by students on a regular basis for their training. It's up to teachers to go in. It's, it's how do they get sorted. It's a volunteer. We need to engage parents. We need to engage volunteers. We need to put books in children's hands so they can take them home. It's a very important issue for our children to be successful in college, that they know how to use a print library. What is it? How are they organized? And find things Thank that they're you, interested Johnson. in. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Would you please wrap up your yeah. comments? Not commented on tonight was what's happening with Sumner School. Not commented on tonight is what is the vacancy. I heard that a teacher was moved from one school to another, but we didn't talk about the overall vacancy. Um, and the other issue that I wanted to um, just make sure we talked about was gifted and talented. I know that myself, when I was participating, Gifted and Talented was on a Saturday. I know you have Saturday schools. Um, and when my children were involved in Gifted and Talented, they make a program available to every child because every child has gifts and talents. Thank you. Mario Perez. Good evening, Mr. Superintendent and board members. My name is Mario Perez. I'm a parent advocate leader for parents for Great Kenton Schools. As a parent advocate leader, I get to work closely with community engagement staff and parents. My goal is to make sure that parents have a pathway to become involved in the decisions being made in their schools to help ensure greater partnership and student success. Recently, I held a parent meeting at Yorkship with over 30 parents in attendance and I would like to invite you to one of our next meetings on January 18th or February 22nd of 2018. It is our hope that you can help us work on how the school can increase the access of families to extend day, day activities. Fairview is a neighborhood on an island and the availability 
of safe education activities in the after school hours is almost non existent. As a result, our youth are being targeted regularly by gangs or simply do not have a place where they can gather in a positive setting. I would also ask for you to help in getting Metro to attend the meeting as parents, as parents would value the opportunity to discuss their concerns and even more, they would appreciate the ability to begin a partnership with the district and Metro to create a safe Fairview. We need your help to make a safer neighborhood for our children and we believe that the school can be the perfect place. If we cannot or will not address the issues of safety, our community will continue to decline and parents will continue to seek options outside the neighborhood that provides extended day activities as a regular part of student education. Thank you once again. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Evan Harris. Evan Harris. Okay, I'm going to respond first to the, uh, I actually just want to thank everyone who came from Dare to Dance and I Dare to Care uh, and advocating on behalf of that incredible organization. Uh, I want to specifically thank Ms. Gillespie and Ms. Grace in Baltimore for their leadership. We will be coordinating with them closely. I know our board members have been part of this conversation as well uh, in terms of facilities and, and, and giving uh, our community access to those facilities and we think it's a wonderful program. And, we're going to be uh, following up with them and, and continuing that conversation to ensure that they get the facility they need for their students. Uh, the Sharp Student Government, uh, you, uh, you voiced uh, the need for support for lunch coverage. I believe that our team has already been in contact with Principal Ruiz and we'll, uh, we'll talk that through in some more detail. Uh, Ms. Turlington, uh, Cooper's Point Family School, you invited me to, um, to a community meeting where we can talk about how Cooper's Point can be more responsive to parents' needs. I know that the principal does have um, times that he sets aside to meet with families. Clearly, it seems we need to be doing more. And so uh, please let us know uh, the information uh, for that family meeting or for that community meeting. And um, I'll make sure that uh, I attend and, 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 and relevant staff will, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure, also be in touch. Ms. Angie Ruiz, who's a parent of, uh, at, uh, of a student at Sharp, uh, voicing concern about how students are throwing away the lunches there. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be attending the January 4th meeting, which I think is an important next step, that January 4th meeting with Aramark. I imagine the Aramark team has probably already uh, been in contact with, uh, with Ms. Ruiz. I see them nodding their heads over there, and we'll, uh, we'll follow up to continue to get more feedback. There was a question about will we uh, maintain the second security officer at Cream School? That is, a, that, that is the plan. We anticipate to keep the second security officer there. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Vida, uh, a few, you, know, you noted a few things. I'm going to address a handful of them here. One is that um, we could be more consistent in the distribution of menus at our schools. One thing that we're looking to do is to actually just put them up on our website. So there's a coming soon marker on the website, and we do anticipate that to go live sooner than later. Uh, the meetings, uh, the board meetings have been broadcasted on, on CCSD TV, and we also put them up online on YouTube. So I'm not sure uh, where that came from. Uh, we will continue to give the public access to the recorded board meetings. Uh, in terms of Black History Month, we do, we do a lot of work with the Amistad strand of our curriculum, and uh, we can sit down with her to talk about that in some more detail. Uh, Ms. Ragsdale, swing space dollars, uh, she's, she's cited this a few times now, and I'll kind of repeat the same answer I've given, which is the SDA did give us um, uh, a swing space budget. We've been using it, so it helped with the creation of some new lockers. It helps pay for the rent at the Boys and Girls Club. That's probably the most significant line item. Uh, we don't actually have an itemized list from the SDA. We can certainly ask them for it, but the rent that we pay for the uh, Boys and Girls Club, which was one of the biggest components of the swing space comes from the SDA. We also spent some money on uh, career and technical education room setup. Uh, additionally, when we had some issues with the Camden High Field House, the SDA helped support the trailer that we put there so that um, our student athletes had access to it. So they've, they've supported us in a lot of different ways. 
Going down the list here, so Ms. Trent, I know that you've been in contact, as you mentioned, with a number of people on our team, uh, and so I want to thank Kevin and our facilities team, Scott Cressanda and others who I know uh, have uh, been in constant dialogue with you. You know, just a few specific things that you noted there. Um, Principal Corby did alert facilities that the flooring in the cafe is ripped. There is no known mold, just so you know, and maybe I someone told you that. Okay, our staff is telling me that it looks like mold, but maybe it's not mold. We'll take it offline. Correct. Okay. Okay, we'll follow up on that. I mean, they, look, we've been responsive. We'll continue working with you on this. Um, on BPLA, look, you're right in terms of Principal Jenkins' time in the annex. Uh, Latney Bradley, you know, who has experience as a principal, who's very strong instructionally, she is there daily, uh, and she's an additional resource. Uh, Janet Johnson, who's a seasoned administrator, former principal, is also in the annex. She does nothing. She does nothing. <laughs> I don't know why you pay her. All right. Um, And there was a question about whether or not we do background checks and recommendations. Of course we do. Uh, we will continue to coordinate with you on those specific concerns. Uh, Ms. Pallott, thank you for sharing the bright spots of Woodrow Wilson. I saw a lot of heads nodding. We're uh, grateful for uh, leadership of Principal James and, and everyone in that building uh, who has played a significant role in uplifting the culture and climate there. Um, we will coordinate with the principal in terms of some of the needs that you called out uh, for additional uh, resources. I think you cited technology specifically. Uh, Mr. Morton, I think we, we should probably just talk offline in terms of the public forum that you, uh, that you requested. I have a few clarifying questions. Ms. Perez, I want to thank you for sharing uh, the story um, about your son at Woodrow Wilson, and I'm sorry that he's had those experiences. Uh, and so there was an incident there last week, and um, we are handling it. Uh, a handful of students have been referred to an alternative education program. We're tr we, we take security very, very seriously. So this happened outside of the building after school hours. Nonetheless, we want to ensure that no student feels the way um, that you, um, that you uh, described your son feeling. And so uh, we, will, we will follow up with you, but I just want you to know that we have taken some steps to ensure that those students um, who did bring kind of weapons to that incident outside of the school building, um, uh, yeah, are, they're being dealt with. We want to make sure that they um, are in a sound educational environment themselves, but given the security concerns that were raised, um, uh, we, we have been working actively to address it. And we did add another security officer, by the way, to Woodrow Wilson, just as an FYI. Um, what's that? And, and a uh, cl climate and culture coordinator. So two, those two positions were added very recently in the last two weeks. Um, Ms. Jocelyn, thank you for all the work you're doing with the pop-up library. Thank you for your continued advocacy uh, for literacy resources. The um, the series uh, of items that you went through, I think, require a much longer conversation. Uh, I don't think I can give you an adequate answer in a short soundbite at a board meeting. And so uh, I know that whether after our meetings or in between board meetings, you are in constant contact with our team, and we will um, continue that dialogue with you. Lastly, Mr. Perez, thank you for the invitation to the January 18th meeting. Uh, we would love to be there if you could share the additional logistics. And we certainly happy to play connected issue role to the Camden County Police department so that we can have uh, them as part of the conversation about how we can make the Fairview community and kind of the, York, the, the, the specific area right around Yorkship safer for, for students and families. I'm going to pass it over to our board president. Thank you, Superintendent Rahanifer. This evening has been devastating to hear some of the things that are coming to us from the community from the parents, the things that are happening inside the school. As a board, we have to deal with accountability and transparency. As a school district, that has to happen. Unfortunately, a lot of the things that were brought up to this meeting tonight has never been brought forward to the board. And I don't like to be able to say that because that, it bothers me We've had the conversation. Once the district knows, the board should know. Because we are part of this community. We are here to serve your 
children and you. So the security in the schools is a major problem. We were concerned when they were cut, but at this point it's being proven that if the children are overrunning what's taking place in the school, then we must do something about that. So I'm sure that Superintendent Rahanaford and his staff will sit down and work with the board that when we come back in, in January, that we will have a plan devised for us to begin to move forward. Yes, the wellness committee should be in your school already. This isn't new. It was in place. If it's not there, it has to be put in. It's the law. Aramark, we used to have a monthly meeting with Aramark, the parent piece, so that we had any concerns, we could nip it in the butt, we could take care of it. Every month we met with their representatives and we worked together along with the students as well to make sure that we had a menu in place that the children were comfortable with. They made recommendations, Aramark worked to make sure that those things took place. I don't know what has happened thus far, but we will go back and revisit those things. From the parent side, there's nothing more devastating than have to see your child come home who's hurt, confused by what they're seeing in school, things that are being said to them, and nobody is defending them. The adult in the room is supposed to make sure that they are taken care of properly. We are having parent training meetings once a month. The next one will be January the 3rd from 10 to 11.30. And this month, we will, be we will be dealing with policies. You need to know what the parental rights are, what your policies are saying and the regulations that how this little district is supposed to carry that out. The next meeting will be at Sharp School from 10 to 11.30 on January the 3rd. Through the DPAC, the last meeting we just had was in reference to technology. You need to know what's going on in your, in your individual school, and then you bring that to the DPAC meeting so that we know what it is that you need. And then we work with the superintendent to make sure we get the things that your children need in the school district. Not just the ones on the left or on the right, all children to be treated the same. We know some of you haven't heard that we are going to be moving. The board building has been sold. As a board member from being on from 2005, the goal was to purchase the building so that when they started development on the waterfront, we would have enough money that when we moved, that we would be able to put a board building in place for you to be able to get to in the community. I'm going to say to you, I'm not comfortable with where we're going. And that's just my personal opinion. And three other board members spoke up in reference to it as well. But the reality is, is that if we now have sold the building for $5.2 million, now is the time that we put a board of education in place for our parents to be able to get to us. My concern is you're putting it on River Road at the Washington School. Parents cannot get there easily. You will have to take two buses for the most part to be able to get there. That is not going to be easy. We concern about the children who have to walk two and a half miles to get to school. But now we have parents who want to get to the district to be able to solve these issues, we're making it harder for them. So the one thing that we did deal with and we're going to work on now is to try to find a location that's centrally localized so that our children can be taken care of properly. We had a district parent center which had four trailers at Pine Point. That's gone. But we have to have a location where parents can get to the solution center, parent center, whatever you want to call it, but somewhere where they can get to and get 
knee without having a problem. So I'm sure that we're going to work on that and just want you to understand that we have the best interest of the children and the parents and the families in this community as we move forward with that. Superintendent is willing to work with us. Kevin Schaefer is going to be a part of it. So we're going to start looking for things that we can make sure that we're giving you what you and your families need. I would say the last piece that I'm concerned about is that with our funding that comes into the school district, there's a system that is in place that has to happen, and if it doesn't, you lose your funding. Superintendent has to understand that the principals need to understand that when you get money into your school, the Title I, II, and three, you must have a PAC in your school, Parent Advisory Council, PAC, because when you talk about parental involvement in the Title I, II, and three money, that's why I'm talking now at the table with the superintendent, because if the things are not put in place and the parents are not the ones who are sitting there helping to make decisions with their individual school, you should have two representatives at every school working on your leadership team with your principal and the rest of the staff. If it's not happening and the money isn't being used properly or it's just sitting there, we've already been told before the superintendent or Hanifar came in here, we don't need to be put in a position where we cannot have funding for our children because we don't have the tax dollars to do what we need. That money takes care of our children in Title I who have special services they need, those with IEPs, those who are English language learners, IDA funds. Parents, when we do a training, we need you to get the information. And the one thing that isn't happening that we'll have put back in place starting next month is that whenever we have those meetings, they should be taped and they should run on Channel 19 because that channel is for the community so that you as parents get to hear it as well as the community people because they have questions they pay taxes and they have the right to know what's happening so I believe that we can all come together and work together in unity so that we can stop having meetings with the outbursts and I understand the outbursts because your parents and your concern if it was your child we all would feel the same way so that's why tonight I didn't hit it right away or shut you down, because a lot has happened in this last month dealing with children in these schools. You need to feel and know that somebody is listening, someone is concerned, and that we're going to work together to make this happen. So I'm looking forward to that. And next month, we will put in place the committee meeting structure. We'll go back in place for the board members to be a part of working along with the superintendent and those committees that we've had that we have not been working in unity on. So we're going to do that because we know how important that is. So with that, Vita, I'll talk to you offline. I've given you plenty of time this evening. So, okay, go ahead, Superintendent. Yeah, so thank you very much, Ms. Wilson. And I do agree that the committee structures will certainly ensure that there's a constant line of communication. I did want to say during my presentation, I should have noted that we had a dialogue about trying to find a more centralized location as like a satellite central office or a solution center um, located more centrally. So I thank you for, uh, for sharing that with the, with the audience here. Not a problem. So if all hearts and minds are clear, is there anything um, any board member would like to say? At this point, Superintendent, we need you to approve in accordance with the powers vested in the state district superintendent under Title 18A, I hereby approve today's superintendent's agenda items and business office agenda items. Thank you. And I would like to say Merry Christmas to all, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A second. Motion to adjourn was... Um, given by Ms. Blackshear and second by Mr. Muhammad. I will call the roll call at this point. Ms. Teresa Atwood. 
Ms. Catherine Blackshear. Ms. Mr. Uh, Brito Bueno. Ms. Dur Dorothy Burley. Ms. Taisha Manier. Mr. Wasim Mohammed. Yes. Ms. Felicia Reyes Morton. And Mrs. Martha Wilson. Yes. The meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>